all the jobs that you switch between starting engineering, doing R and D, and then moving into management and ultimately, I uh, guess, business, just oversight. What were the biggest challenges that you faced switching between those different jobs, and how did you deal with them? I, I never really had any problem switching. You know, I remember early in my career, and that's it, some people have big problems with that, some don't. I remember I went to a boss and said I've been given, I've been made this offer. He said, you know, you've got a really good future here, and this happened to be in chassis design. Why would you want to go up and do that? And I said, you know, that's a challenge, and I'm ready to take it on. So I have to say that I didn't have any problem ever. I, I never ever turned down a job that I was offered, and I never regretted any one of them. Now, some people don't like change, and, and you know, you should do whatever your passion tells you to do. If you want to, you know, they said. I really believe that being happy in life and being productive in life and being having a good family, et cetera, those are the things that are really important. It's not how high you achieve, but you gotta be happy. And you're not gonna do well if you aren't happy in your personal life and your work life and so forth. And so, you know, listen to your conscience and do do what it tells you. What would you say, like, the um, most, like, traits that you have that pushed you to become CEO um, of Chrysler? Like, what type of traits you think is the best to help you with? Okay, um, I kind of naturally, without really trying, gravitated to a number of leadership positions fairly early. While I was going to, to school here, uh, I was, there wasn't much to do in our Kansas City in the summer. I was, I was going out to Oregon and Washington and working on pea canneries and driving caterpillars and combines and things like that. And in my third year out there, fourth year out there, I guess it was, I became the superintendent of the cannery at night over the in that charge. Uh, and I had and any idea that I wasn't pursuing that in any way, shape, or form. I did, I did some things here at KU, uh, again, I didn't have the best grades, et cetera. But I was uh, president of ASME and ASTME, I believe, and some you know, engineering positions, some other leadership kind of things. If I had to say the one thing, though, was I was never worried about what I made or what my level or title was. If somebody would give me responsibility, I would take it, never ask. When I was about 28 years old, I had people working for me that were two levels above me. And it's just something that I couldn't move, I couldn't move any faster. And it worked out well because we had mutual respect for each other. And they were making like a lot more than I was making, a lot better title. It never concerned me at all because I knew if I kept doing well, it was going to help me work out. And that was sort of my philosophy all the way through is don't worry about what your next job is, don't worry about what your pay is. You know, if, if, you know the really good people never, ever, ever, ever get laid off. That's what you've got to think about. And, you know, right now, what we're facing in this economy, it's a, it's a tough economy out there. I guarantee you, we are not laying off the best employees. If you want job security, that's how you get it. Is, you know, have a, do what you have a passion for. That'll make you work hard, make you do well, and then let it happen. Um, I, I'm teaching at the School of Business uh, on corporate strategy, and I'm interested in how does top management make strategic decisions? Um, basically, um, what process have you uh, to 
go through to make sure the um, R-scale division light the merger with uh, Daimler, uh, you know, is strategically solid. Uh, and take this as example, and from the hindsight, uh, what would you do differently uh, if you have to choose, you know, uh, murder partner or some other and again? Okay, the, the way I approach strategy, every place that I worked at or I got far enough to, to have some control, was when I first went into an organization, have, to begin with, a three-day offsite with some with a facilitator. And out of that, you develop, first, what is your mission? And Chrysler was should produce cars that people want to drive, want to buy, enjoy driving, and want to buy again. That's the mission. Now, that takes, takes three days to come up with that, believe it or not, because you've got to get the buying of everybody there. And it's not me writing it down, because that doesn't do any good at all. Then you work on what your key success factors are. And in my case, we worked out, you know, five. And if we were going to meet our mission, we had to make these key success factors good. our focus. And that was, you know, great products, a customer focus with quality, profitability, uh, obviously our reputation, and more importantly, our people. I used to tell our people all the time, the only thing we have that nobody else has How we organize them, how we motivate them, how we reward them, how we work together, it's going to make a difference. It always comes down to people. And so I did that, I did that in engineering, I did that in Europe, I did that at Chrysler. And then every year you've got to go back and get these all these people together. And you've got to review that and see if this is still, and again, you do it with a facilitator. I'm not up front doing it, it's somebody else, because if you're drawn and out trying to get everybody in the room to participate, <coughs> and because uh, if they don't, if you don't have buy-in from the people, you're wasting your time completely. Now, with respect to a, to a merger like with Daimler, that's a much, much harder thing to do. First of all, you have to do it under extreme secrecy, because you're in a public public traded companies. Uh, and in our case, we misjudged the cultural fit. Now, if you, if you read books on mergers and acquisitions, you know very well that only about 50% of them work. Uh, it's much, much harder to do than you would think it would be. If, if somebody just, if you buy a smaller company and integrate it, that's pretty easy. I'm on the Chevron board now. We've done five companies, I believe it is, in the past uh, nine years. And they're totally, completely seamless. You can't tell who was, you know, from what company before, and that's the way it has to be if it's going to work. But when you, and you end up basically with one, with one name, one brand, etc. When when you're putting two companies together that are located in, on two continents in pretty dramatically different cultures. And I've lived in, I lived in Zurich, Switzerland four years running those operations and obviously the German uh, portion of that was the biggest part, Oval, which is a reasonable size probably company. And worked with Germans for many, many years before that and all during that period. And and I guess I, we collectively underestimated the difference that there would be with Mercedes culture. And it was mixing at the top. Down the working level, we got along great. Hello, Mr. Eaton. Um, first of all, I thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to talk to you. And uh, thanks for the great building. And uh, I have two questions. Uh, so, first question. Um, 
So being on the top position, um, you probably had a lot of people look up to you, and uh, you probably had a lot of appraisals, but also at the same time, I feel like you had a lot of criticism from people, and I'm just wondering how you dealt with that. And uh, the second question is, uh, since you retired, um, do you have any other aspirations for a future um, lifetime? So, I don't know. Okay, let me, let me go to the uh, second question first. Uh, I am coaching a CEO in a startup. Uh, it happens to be a software uh, startup. Uh, and uh, I've been doing that for about five years. It started by a friend of mine asking me if I would go and meet with this guy, and I did. We talked about two hours, and he said, geez, you know, I'd really like you to go on the board. And I said, I'm not going on another board. He said, well, can we get together and talk? And I said, sure. Anytime you want to talk, you call. You want to hear from me. Well, now, I'll average a half a dozen emails a day. I'll talk in person with him at least once a week. We'll Skype uh, sometimes uh, two, uh, two hours. Uh, it, uh, we're, we're in a pretty, the company's now 11 years old. Uh, we're uh, about at the point we hope uh, that we can, uh, can sell it, but it's, uh, it's a social network. It's called Engage Networks, and uh, it's, a, it's a great little company. So I'm spending a lot of time. I'm spending time on the Chevron board. I'm turning down everything else. In fact, I, I, my motto is that I won't do anything I don't want to do at this stage of my life unless my wife.